on the air? Yes, it appears so. Anyway, making a response video, I think the comments, you know, what the hell. Um, Thunderfoot Defenders are kind of funny, so I figured, what the hell, we'll read some of this shit. And see where it goes. Could be, it could be entertaining. Could be, maybe not. We'll see how it goes. I'll try to avoid the gratuitously complimentary comments, just deal with the cranks, so to speak. So anyway, this is Fireball Fitness Guy. Um, said, yes, I remember that Thunderfoot. I think it was the Magic Sandwich Show, which is kind of a useless comment, to tell you the truth, but fine, whatever. I, you know. <laughs> okay. But then later he posts a link, but he has, well, anyway, I'll get to that later. Uh, which was good. Thank you for the link. But your comments didn't make any sense. Anyway, but we'll deal with that later. Uh, I hope you choked to death on your vegan pizza while crying over Lady Gaga song. Well, anyway, I, you know, uh, uh, crying over a song. I don't know. Um, vegan pizza? No, I wouldn't even bother. Yeah, I don't, I don't need to have, like, vegan ice cream or something. I'm just not somebody who does a pretend food thing. Potato chip is fine. Vegan potato chip. Yeah, I mean, I can go for that. Um, but likewise, yeah, I mean, I, you know, it's fine. I, I, it, it would only make sense, okay? I mean, I don't have any Lord Trumpenstein. I'm sure the, the universe doesn't need people who have such an identity crisis. They have to have some preposterous screen name and steal somebody else's image as an icon. And, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm quite sure. I mean, the universe can probably function quite excellently without such a thing in the universe. So, yeah, I'm, I'm perfectly good with you choking likewise and such. So, yeah, go about your choking business. Anyway, um, oh, this 6C guy. Uh, Google heritability of political orientation. Well, that's really not the subject. Of course, there's no anti-natalist gene, but anti-natalism could be a byproduct of other tendency that might be genetic. Well, I don't think there's any genetic tendency. There's obviously, yes, parents get to program their children. <laughs> Gee, yeah, there's there's a relationship between parents and kids. Um, yeah, but that doesn't really have anything to do with any kind of um, philosophy. You, you don't make a you don't make an argument as a, a reasonable person. You don't argue against some philosophy based on the fact that it's not genetically sustainable or that you can't program children with that philosophy. That's not like a legitimate way to say. Well, that can go nowhere because you'll never make kids believe that, uh, you know, because it's whatever, too intelligent for, um, you know, you can't brainwash them, let's just say, or something. There's some rule. But anyway, it's just a stupid argument. You just won't admit his argument was stupid. So instead you make these, this, this attempt to rationalize an idiotic notion. That is totally irrelevant. Even if it were true, it would be evidence of even how more futile existence is in the sense that we're going to sit there and genetically arrive at the truth. That's enlightenment. Enlightenment is a genetic quality. You, yeah, you think that's going to work out okay? No, I don't think so. So it's just stupid. It's a stupid counter-argument, okay, to any theory of any description of reality. Somebody has a description of reality. And if your counter-argument has something to do with the genetic code of the parents of the person possessing the ideology, it's a retarded argument as a counter-argument. All right, anyway. Um, so John Mills, I guess he said something to this idiot. And he says, I think those studies are sort of bullshit. Oh, that's a different guy. Uh, might be that some people have other roles in society than reproduction. It's likely those roles would be very influential. Uh, for example, Hitler never had kids, but had a huge effect on human species as a whole. Yeah, well, whatever. That's really not the conversation again. <laughs> the, the, we, we don't want philosophy. I, I mean, obviously the Unabomber won as a philosopher because he got a bunch of people to read his shit. But... Nobody rational would say, that's the world we want. Yes, kill people so they'll read your shit. I mean, obviously, nobody would say, yes, that's the world I want. No, they would say, no, that's exactly not a legitimate way for ideas to propagate within a civilization. Uh, fuck. 
they should have to win the argument. <laughs> you know, so if Thunderfoot said, it'll be impossible for a theory that says life is futile and the very production of it is impositionally risky and too risky for you to have the right to impose it without any consent, you know, some statement like that. You know, if he wants to argue that that is not uh, logically reasonable and therefore it doesn't have any legitimacy, we'll make that argument. But again, making some idiotic argument that no civilization that has survived has had a non-surviving philosophy ideology. <laughs> well, obviously, no society that became atheist, let's say, built cathedrals. Yeah, they probably didn't build, I don't think, I don't know, I mean, I'm, you know, I don't know if we can find a totally atheist society, but I bet there's no cathedrals in it. Yes, a, a society that doesn't believe reproduction is a good idea, uh, the fact that, yes, it will not survive in the future is perfectly rational. That's called success. That's the philosophy's actually succeeding, idiot. I mean, I should, you know, this, I shouldn't have to explain this, right? No, no way I shouldn't have to. Um, anyway, uh, so this is semi-complimentary. Uh, Anti-nihilism video. No, 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 we're not doing that. Uh, well, let's get to the Zad guy, because he's funny. Zad the Destroyer showed up. Brilliant. Just a brilliant person. All right, anyway, so I love these kind of guys, though. These are the ones I really like. You complain about cherry picking, yet that is what you are doing. How so? I mean, I, I'm just pointing out that Thunderfoot's arguments are weak. All right? They're just really weak. And if and somebody should point out, if, he, if this is the game he's going to play, let's just find his weakest arguments and make fun of them. But I mean, all Thunderfoot's arguments on feminism, in my opinion, are weak because all he makes is these weak, kind of cheap um, attack videos. He doesn't attack the ideology. He just attacks little, you know, three or four sentence, three or four word sentences. That's all he attacks. All right, why don't you show relevant clips? Well, I'm okay. I, I've, you want me to do it again? I'll do it again. I already made a response video to his initial video on rape, you know, when he started all this feminism bullshit, where he plainly said, if a woman doesn't go to the police, she wasn't raped. Okay, I mean, so I already played the clip. I already did a response video to it. Now, in this video, I'll play some of the Magic Sandwich show. Just, you know. But, I mean, there's no doubt about what he said. Fuckhead. So, again, this is just a distraction. Anyway. Just see you're <coughs> wrongly posting his position. I just see you wrongly positing his position. Well, again, you're making an accusation now that I can disprove, and so what's, what's your opinion? So how are you going to, you know, what, what, what's you going to say, sorry, I guess I was wrong? Are you going to do something to make up for the fact that you're just lying about me now, fucker? <laughs> and making his argument non-nuanced. Well, again, there wasn't any nuance. It's not that there's no nuance in his argument, okay? His argument was, look, women, you don't want to get raped. There's certain behavioral things that'll guarantee you're not going to get raped. I mean that you, you mean that's nuanced in the sense that he doesn't overtly say, "Well, don't don't dress like a hooker, and I won't treat you like a hooker." There's not some there's nuance in somehow what he's saying. No, he's basically saying that look, women, you have to take responsibility, and yes, I want you to show me your hooters, get drunk, wear miniskirts, but I'm not going to give you the right to do that and then claim you were raped. I mean, that's his philosophy, fuckhead. Ugh, anyway. Then you complain that making fun of Anita is too lowbrow. I didn't say it's too lowbrow. I'm saying he's not dealing with her argument, all right? He's just, he's sitting there. Again, quote mining is kind of a, it's not something somebody who has a good argument should have to resort to. That's my point, okay? My point is he's supposed to be a scientist and he's supposed to, take it to a higher level and he's taking it to a lower level and why would he do that 
And my only argument is, is that he's doing it because he's weak. All right? And we've sort of seen it, okay? I mean, he's had debates with Christians and he's lost them. All right? Because, yeah, you take away his little hacker tools, you, know, you take away his hatchet job tools, and he's weak. Because he's a nihilist. He's a fucking asshole. <laughs> I mean, yeah, a Christian can make Thunderfoot look like an asshole because Thunderfoot will basically say something stupid like, well, it doesn't matter if I rape a woman because she's not me. <laughs> yeah, there's no proof she really exists. <sighs> He's a solipsistic, nihilist, motherfucking cunt. Anyway. And yet you are just throwing insults. Well, I don't think I'm just throwing insults. I'm attacking what I think uh, is a completely imbecilic nonsensical um, philosophical point of view that this idiot has. He, he is a nihilist. He is a, he's a selfishist. He really doesn't think, okay, the sum total of his life is his effect on other people. He doesn't believe his effect on other people has anything to do with whether he's winning or not. He thinks he can win the game of life and he can run over as many beasties as he, he cares to. And he still wins. Because he wins. That's, his, that's how shallow this fucker is. <clears throat> uh, well, he is not really a scientist. Well, he's not really a scientist. Whatever whimsy attack that is. <sighs> Wimpsy? Whimsy. Well, whatever. Um is basically just bad. Well, anyway, I, I'm just saying that you don't think. It's your opinion that people who have an education, a high education, shouldn't be held to a higher standard in terms of how they argue. That they shouldn't have some experience with logic and cognition to and be capable of doing better, not worse, than idiots. I'm not supporting all of what Thunderfoot has possibly said. Well, that's just, that's kind of weak, right? I'm not asking you what possibly said. I mean, whatever. But I think you are badly misrepresenting the argument. Well, again, you haven't pointed out any specific where I've badly misrepresented the argument. You've just made a vague accusation of misrepresentation. But you haven't demonstrated by pointing out how I'm wrong to say he didn't basically imply that women um, do have to take responsibility for the jeopardy they put themselves in. I think he actually used his mountain lion experience as an argument in defense of that very theory. I think he actually did say something like, well, I choose to take a risk, and women are choosing to take a risk. I think that happened, but well, it doesn't matter. I, I mean, I'm just saying... <laughs> I could go back and do his video again if you want me to, okay? His his whole diagnosis of, of how there isn't any such thing as a rape culture and the idiotic arguments he used to defend that nonsense. You know, he also thinks that women, basically, right, if you're raped and you don't go to the police, you basically, as a woman, don't have a right to honestly testify to the fact that you were raped by somebody. So it's like you could witness somebody commit a crime, and because there's no other evidence but you, you're witnessing it, and there's no prosecutor who wants to prosecute it, you're not allowed to say you saw it. I mean, it's idiotic. And I'm not completely disagreeing with what you are saying. Well, whatever, I don't know what, what the incomplete part is. It seems like a complete disagreement. I think you are crossing wires. Well, I don't think, I think you're rationalizing a non-trespass, okay? Thunderfoot's videos are clearly intended <laughs> and clearly manufactured <clears throat> um, to you know, demonize feminists, demonize anyone who wants men to live up to a higher standard. That's clearly what they're intended to do. And it's, in, it's clearly he's basically giving aid and comfort to weak-minded men um, who have difficulty 
um, controlling uh, their desperate uh, trying to come up with a word for daydreams, but you know their 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 notion that they're somehow entitled. Yeah. Um, why don't talk to Thunderfoot instead of make these crap videos? Well, I, I did try talking, but I mean, you know, you, where you get Thunderfoot is in that stupid magic sandwich shithole. And frankly, you know, unless you're willing to talk over those assholes, you're not going to get an, a word in edgewise if you say anything the least bit controversial. Because they'll just bore you to death with their, <laughs> um, uh, whatever you want to call it, their glib um, dismissals or make more solid cases. Well, again, I don't mind making more videos on the subject, so I, I don't mind replaying Thunderfoot's video a few hundred times to just keep pointing out how this is the, an insipidly stupid and insensitive argument. Um, to, to imply that women are lying, you know, um, and to do it in the sense that, yes, it's just totally impossible that a woman would find it totally idiotic to go run to police who aren't known for their grand and wonderful sensitivity um, with their unprovable accusation of rape. <sighs> Fuck. Stupid fucker. Gary is completely off base. I get the feeling that he has a personal issue with Thunderfoot. Yeah, Thunderfoot is an idiot. <laughs> so my personal issue is, is that he's a menace. Pretending, you know, he's, he's wearing this this veneer of I, like I said, I'm a dedicated logical scientist, and that's why I'm an atheist, and that's why I'm this, and that's why I'm that, and he's really some kind of pantheic, um, you know, Gaia-ish, uh, Darwinian, nihilist motherfucking cunt, which, in my opinion, is a religion. Nihilism is a religion. Uh, if you can't acknowledge that suffering sucks, no matter what brain it's in, then you're a fucking religious kook. Um, watching Gary not only misrepresenting what Thunderfoot said, well, show me the misrepresentation, but also putting words into his mouth, well, those are basically a redundant statement, retard, is really disturbing. Yeah, well, I find it really disturbing that Thunderfoot is going to attempt to um, paint all feminists as somebody who wants to cut male nuts off. I find that disturbing. Oh, fuck you. Um, so Zad, so here he's who he shows up, Zad the Destroyer. So let's take a quick look at Zad. <laughs> yeah, he's here somewhere. I think. Oh, seated press. Yeah. Oh, there he is. There's Zad's ass. Zad, you you are you have a fat ass. Um. <laughs> so anyway, this guy apparently thinks he's somebody. Um, you know, and he has a, a background image is kind of hilarious. But it's he has like a, 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 a shaved penis tattoo in the middle of his chest, which is kind of funny. Um, and this is very interesting. He has a ornament of such in sorts. <laughs> yeah, obviously made by Penthouse. You know, Penthouse was kind of obsessed with boob size. Or was that? No, that was Playboy. Yeah, so it must be a Playboy. It must be manufactured by Playboy Inc. Because they, they seem to be obsessed. I mean, you know, breasts had to be, you know, 48s and such. But anyway. But anyway, this isn't somebody to be afraid of. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Look, I'm exercising. I'm going to do some exercising videos too. But <sighs> Duracell batteries. Yeah. I wonder what they're for, Zad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, it's probably all porn, right? Uh, yeah, oh, well, anyway, so yeah, Zad, you're a healthy guy, no doubt about it. Healthy body, healthy mind, yeah. Yeah, he, he wears a, well, whatever, Jason mask, as he does his karate and such. Well, anyway, enough of, enough of that. But anyway, just thought a little context is sometimes important. But anyway, Zad is retarded. But he posts a whole bunch of comments. So it's like, oh, yeah, Zad, you're just so fucking smart. And you have such great input and great insight. I mean, it's just fantastic. Yes, 
you deserve to have 15 comments on one video. Ugh. That's right. So what if Thunderfoot doesn't support the feminist agenda? Good on him, I say. <laughs> they get way too much attention than they deserve. Yes, this, this, this idiotic notion that somehow women should defend um, their right not to be... Um, uh, it's preyed upon. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, by liars and cheaters and thieves. Uh, sorry, cat interruption. Always something. Well, it's not always something. Sometimes it's nothing. But sometimes it's something. Anyway. Um, and, well, look, you know, the attention they get is mostly created by your hysterical overreaction, fat ass. So if you, if, you, if you insecure men wouldn't hysterically overreact every time a woman suggests your dick's ugly, then you wouldn't, there wouldn't be this whole, all this attention. They wouldn't be getting any attention unless you gave it to them, idiot. I mean, I'm not giving them any attention. I don't need to hear the wine because I already know the wine. I already know this story. I've already, I've already had enough women friends who have told me stories of their, you know, f fun rape adventures that, yeah, I already understand the point. I already, I already get it. So it's not me that's making them into heroes. It's you idiots showing up to try to smite them and then failing to do it very well that are making them into more than they would need to be. Not that I'm saying feminist agenda isn't important. I mean, obviously we're making progress and it just keeps, you know, the ball just keeps rolling and it keeps rolling in the right direction and you're just, you're the loser. Too bad. <laughs> and he is educated in the sciences. Well, I'm saying that, that obviously he didn't learn. Uh, he got an education, but he didn't learn anything. I can tell what points he has made. I can tell what points he has made. You can't, <laughs> you know, you can't write a comprehensible sentence. So fuck this nitpicking that Gary does on him. Yes, it's nitpicking uh, when some asshole attempts to imply that rape doesn't really happen because if it really did, then all these women would go to the police. Makes me question whether or not he has any balls. Well, I, I would question <laughs> the reason why you have a, a penis shaved in your chest is because you don't have the real one. Idiot. Uh, anyway. Well, why don't you stop being in denial that Gary's hard? Oh, that's, uh, that's complimentary. So, fuck the sucking part. Uh, I think this Novak guy is a nut. So, let's see what he says. What I found to be a bit hypocritical was his stance on do no harm, but wishes harm upon Thunderfoot. Well, I don't necessarily wish harm on Thunderfoot for no purpose. I'm just saying that, let's just take this idea. I'm saying, look, obviously it's a room, you know, I used to do, what, six, eight hours of this stuff a night, and, you know, it's probably four in the morning, and, yeah, I'm pissed off, and I say something really kind of just overstated. But I'm just defending the argument that deserve should be a concept. And how do you make up for these kinds of impositions? How do you make up? It's like, when, you know, if you, if you, if you accident, <laughs> if you, by reckless accident, okay, where you knew you were doing something that might lead to somebody having their arm hacked off and they have their arm hacked off. How do you ever make up for something like that? Uh, you know, I, I mean, you just can't. And when you start fucking with another person's sexuality, and that's what raping is, is it's, it's your, your trespassing on the other individual's future sexual gratification. You might destroy their capacity to ever enjoy sex. What, what, what should be the price for that? So again, you know, it's hard to define what this deserved thing means. Yes, it's a minor crime of stupidity and idiocy. But, you know, it's one that's so preventable. And that's my argument here. Okay, I don't care about punishing. I care about preventing. And you can't prevent this malignant, stupid, male, myopic, moronic sense of entitlement when it comes to females 
if assholes like Thunderfoot are going to keep sticking it in little teenage brains that you're entitled, you're entitled. She showed you the boobs, so now you're entitled, you're entitled. And that's what he's, that's what he's whispering in their ears, idiot. Thunderfoot has a very uh, maligned, no, <laughs> well, something, way of thinking. But it seems that Gary has taken a route of ad hominem attack without proving any substance or of evidence of his own. Well, again, I don't have to. I'm just saying you're going to tell me that if you spend five minutes thinking about the subject of rape, you, won't, uh, you, you can't understand that there's no solution to the problem of he said, she said, besides videotaping private relationships? I mean, you really don't understand that this is not something, you, you can't fix this through any other mechanism than trying to make men less rapey. You can't really understand that that's the only real way you can fix this problem is to make men who find rape abhorrent, who never would have an impulse to ever act in that way, who knows that it's the same thing as cutting their nuts off, to have to steal it. I don't know what analogy to put on this, but I mean, it's like cheating, for fuck's sake, to somebody who's, you know, a real man. Real men don't cheat. <laughs> you know, whatever. You can't get that? Really, you do five minutes of thinking on the subject of rape and you can't understand how women are, are in an incredibly vulnerable position in relationships with men? And that they're, you know, the which, you know, well, I could, I could point to the idiotic solutions of the Zad monster, which is women should carry guns. Well, when exactly should they pull out the gun? <laughs> you know, when, when? When does that happen? After the crime? How does she know before she's already compromised that she's going to be compromised and that she can go get her gun... Okay, and then point the gun at him because now he's already violated her enough for her to know that he's a raper. You really think that's practical? And exactly how would pulling the gun after she's been raped solve anything? Oh, that's right, it wouldn't solve anything. And just the, the practical idea of women with guns, <laughs> you know. I, I don't want, I mean, who wants, to go to, who wants to go to bed with somebody with a gun, for fuck's sake? Brilliant, but you know, Zad, I guess he's just too smart for me. I can't, I can't, uh, yeah, I just can't get his, that the brilliance of that I idea. Yeah, yeah, women carrying guns would prevent rape. Sure, it would. Again, there's this lack of under right. Most rape is not woman walking down dark alley, rapist pops out. That's not most rape. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, okay, Gary's also mentioned if hitting someone with a spike, not what he said, but similar as a mechanistic example, prevents more suffering somehow than it's justified in a sense, you know, and did prevent suffering. Of course, it's a hypothetical, but still, but obviously you should know when he... Oh, that's the response to him. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've said lots of things, but I mean, obviously, yes, you can impose prevention. What price do you pay for it, right? I mean, punishing criminals for the value of prevention makes it possible to justify punishment. But I'm just, I've already made these arguments. I mean, obviously, there's no reason to punish anything if it can't have any practical effect on any future consequence. But I'm just saying the word deserve is a little more complicated than that. People probably, criminals probably should get better than they deserve. But I mean, just I'm just saying the word deserve isn't the same as what's practical or useful. And maybe it would be practical or useful um, if we did have an actual hell and it was public, you know, like, like there was glass windows and you could just look through them and see hell and you could see the assholes burning in hell, that it might be effective for people to who are contemplating extortion and 
you know, whatever, contemplating some crime, that if they saw the people in hell writhing and going, I'm sorry, I didn't, uh, just had a selfish impulse, you know, that they might reconsider their plan to steal it and not steal it. Anyway. Um, all right, so we'll go. Where's the sad, all these responses to sad, but no sad comments. Ah, okay, inflicting suffering doesn't prevent suffering, you fool. So again, the idea is, is having a penalty for crime doesn't prevent crime. That's another one of Zad's brilliant uh, observations about life. So there's no point in having criminal penalties for behavior because you won't prevent anybody from doing it by having a penalty for it. So go ahead, legalize murder, and there won't be any more murders. Nobody would... <laughs> it's the, the fear of punishment isn't stopping anyone from murdering, right? Except maybe me. <sighs> Shit. All right. Uh, <clears throat> I have, motherfucker. I was in Gary's chat room in the past when Stickham was still around, and I'm a, and I'm college educated. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you got a master's in fat ass, and self educated. Uh, that's what lard brain. So I will express my opinion. Well, anyway, it's called freedom of speech. Yeah, again, freedom of speech. What? No, freedom of graffiti. I mean, all you're doing is graffitiing here. Um, and thankfully, it's still in the government policy to uphold. Well, again, your freedom of speech is you have a YouTube channel and you can make videos about anything. And what do you make videos about? Look at my fat ass. <laughs> that's what you make videos about. Look, look how fat my ass is. Look, here's my ass again. You like my fat ass? That's what you make videos about. And video games, of course. So that's what you waste your free speech on. But this crap you're doing on my video isn't your free speech. This is, you know, my artistic expression. And you're pissing on it, asshole. <laughs> that's all it comes down to. All right, so anyway, here's the... This guy's a little bit... I don't know. Maybe I, you know, I do read poorly, so maybe I'm just not understanding what he's saying, but he's just, I, you know, I can't get this. All right, <clears throat> so Thunderfoot's infall infallibility. Actually, this time code, you should probably put it in some kind of brackets to prevent it to be from being a link, because obviously this time code goes with this video, not this video, so time code doesn't work. But anyway, Thunderfoot's uh, infallibility. When he said all antinomies would die out as if there was a connection between genetics and philosophy, which of course there is not. By the way, I was wrong in my memory. I was thinking of concordance as Thunderfoot, but Thunderfoot was not even there. He, well, of course he was there. He just had a different name. It was obviously Thunderfoot, and he just called himself Xavier Lumens. <laughs> but you know, it was Thunderfoot. The following are time marks from the video in the Magic Sandwich Show. So anyway, it's just the end of the video. Um, so creatures that don't prop propagate become extinct. That is where Gary becomes annoyed. Yes, Gary becomes annoyed because it's obviously the philosophy intends that we become extinct. That would be the first argument. That's called success. And the reason why we aren't there previously is because people weren't anti-natalists quite obviously so why would i expect anti-natalists to breed successfully of course i wouldn't anyway but the, the real point was he was his his statement was that this is a non-viable philosophy because of some like this is somehow a reason to discount it as a viable philosophy because somehow it's not going to have any social viability. Duh! <laughs> yeah, well, it's a non-argument. Oh, anyway, that is where Gary becomes annoyed, Yeah, you know, well, I was annoyed before that, saying we genetically inherit our philosophy, in other words, and then says that is inaccurate. I probably said something worse than that. Uh, so anyway, so Xavier Lumen still tries to make his point heard. How many societies promote antinatalism? Zero. Well, again, that was stupid. Therefore, the same reason you don't have societies that like to put their heads in blenders. So he compares, it, he compares the philosophy 
that recognizing natalism as reckless and um, excessively impositional and risky, that philosophy is the same thing as putting your head in a blender. And that's supposed to be somehow a rational counter-argument. I don't think so. His real point being that society would not survive. Well, obviously, again, of course it wouldn't survive. But how does that have anything to do with the legitimacy of the philosophy? Absolutely nothing to do with it. I mean, if, if there was a God, and we found out that humans give God cancer, and for the love of God, we exterminated ourselves so we didn't give God cancer, It would be wrong to do it because we didn't survive recognizing that we were a fucking malicious, malignant, attacking, <laughs> useless piece of shit. Anyway, that's no point. You either get this or you don't, I guess. I mean, it's not that complicated. So, considering the a negative feeling is objectively immoral and evil intrinsically, in every sentient being a non-existence of free will, something like that, terminating for eternity a rapist, or rather his consciousness, what? Slave of his human brain. It is equal to rape an innocent woman for eternity, right? Considering that a negative feeling is objectively immoral. Uh, well, again, I, w I never use the word immoral, so that's just stupid and evil. So why, why even, why putting those words in my mouth, idiot? Uh, but anyway, shit, the next time I will lick the tears of some underage bitch that I just deflowered, huh? I'll feel a lot better about myself. That means sometimes the contradictory messages from my guru and living middle finger to the universe are useful. Well, anyway, I don't even know what the fuck you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. I just don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Um, I, look, obviously, I don't... Um, I, I'm philosophical. Look, if, you know, th th this argument could be, you know, rhetoric is um, it's like a fight, right? So if you go into a boxing ring and somebody, you get hit and you notice the brass knuckles the guy's wearing, right? And then you get kicked and you notice he's got spikes in his shoes. You just don't sit there and say, okay, I'm just going to stand here and get spiked and knuckled to, to fucking death. I'm just going to lose. Your tendency is to say, well, I'm going to up the game then, okay? I'll break off a stick and, uh, you know, you'll find a weapon. So that's the tendency. So, you know. But it still doesn't really matter. Again, my, my point is, <laughs> is that there's a real problem in figuring out how exactly, um, you know, when, when somebody is malicious... You know, that is such a different kind of crime, right? I mean, when, you know, when somebody accidentally, like, okay, they get drunk and they really don't know they're as drunk as they are and they're just, and, and they just kind of make a mistake and drink and drive. But then when somebody knows exactly, okay, I'm drunk as fuck, um, I know I shouldn't get in the car, I know I can get a ride with somebody else, I mean, they're, they're just totally, they just don't give a shit about the victim they might be creating. It is a different crime, right? I mean, the, the, the deserved punishment is different. And again, the punishment doesn't really have any relevance in a world where you don't need to fix a problem, where you don't need to prevent future rape. So I'm just saying, you know, well, that's all I'm saying. I'm, I just want to prevent women from being raped. And I think the easiest way to prevent women from being raped, I mean, it really doesn't cost anything, is to clearly say rape is bad. 
and to say men should do everything they can to avoid doing anything that looks like rape. What's so hard about saying that? Why is that a, a difficult for men to say and just say, yeah, that's the end of the subject. Rape is bad and no decent man would perpetrate anything that looks like rape. I didn't say that very eloquently, but I mean, it's just a simple idea, isn't it? Isn't the idea to prevent rape, and I'm just saying Thunderfoot's doing something, in my opinion, in my opinion, he's doing exactly the opposite. He's facilitating the nihilist, selfish psychology that creates male rapists. All right. Nobody can really believe that if a woman doesn't go to the cops, she wasn't raped, right? Oh, okay, that's the Maya, that's that guy. All right, here's the Mike Novak guy. He should say something pretty stupid. It would be equivalent to saying, "Oh, I was abused by my parents, but I don't, <clears throat> but I didn't go to child protective ser services. Ergo, the abuse never happened." A very flawed line of logic. It would be equivalent to say, so you're agreeing here, right? I was abused by my parents, but I didn't go to child protective services. Ergo, the abuse never happened. Yeah. So again, I don't know who side you on, Mike. Uh, anyway, man, cheese always goes a little bit too far. So whatever. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> um, thank you. Oh, we don't do the thank you thing. We do the Zad thing here. Yeah, Zad. Uh, then most men will resent or hate you, as most females are biologically programmed to reproduce. So this is how much this guy's college educated. And he thinks women are biologically programmed to reproduce like other fucking animal. Like any other fucking animal. I, I mean, really, it doesn't take much understanding of evolution and the psychology of mammals especially to understand that they're programmed to enjoy sex. And that there's no make baby program. <laughs> There just isn't. It's a consequence. It's not, it's a byproduct of what they want, which is sexual interaction. Animals are not thinking about making babies when they're having sex. You really think they're thinking, I'm making a baby, I'm making a baby. No, I don't think they're thinking that. So you're really dumb, Zad. Sadly, sadly, sadly. Sadly, sadly. Yeah. Anyway, so is that right? And if a woman, and if women are so afraid of men, they can always carry a gun with them. I know it's still pretty easy to get a gun, <laughs> at least in America. But that might bring up other problems. Yeah, like when she's supposed to pull the trigger, shithead. Um, <clears throat> okay, oh, come on, Gary, you completely straw man Thunderfoot's position on rape. Again, I can play his video again. You want me to go back and I'll find the video and I'll play it again. How would that be? And we can hear the same stupid, idiotic arguments all over again. He never said that it was good that women can't go for a walk through the park. I didn't say he said anything about women going, through the, uh, going for a walk in the park. That's exactly my point. He doesn't say anything about it because he hasn't thought about it. He never said that women are somehow morally responsible for getting raped because they got drunk at a party. Well, he does say exactly that. And he does say they're not allowed to walk at night, asshole. So he does say that. He says it quite clearly. That that's one of the behaviors that, well, gee, you stupid bitch, what are you doing out at night? This rapist loose. He said that. So anyway. Also, you mentioned the fact that rape victims whether they be female or male, usually aren't able to prove that they were raped, and so the rapist then goes unpunished. I didn't say a goddamn thing about being an unpunished rapist, did I? No, I didn't say a single thing about unpunished rapists. Again, my point isn't, I want to punish rapists. My point is, I want to prevent rape. And I think the only reason why rape happens is because some men are raised by assholes. 
men who aren't men. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's it, right? Weak men. Um, and um, they don't learn what integrity is and what honor is and what it is not to be a slimy, thieving, selfish, fucking bastard. Ah, uh, well, anyway. Well, what the fuck are we supposed to do, Gary? You're supposed to not defend raping. <laughs> You're supposed to say, yes, rape is bad. Yes, I understand women are in a really tough position because, you know, it's nice that they would trust us and it's nice that they would have fun at parties and now and then let their bra down and um, maybe dance nude on the bar or do this or do that. And that's all kind of fun. And it would be really bad if their only recourse was to say, no, we got to shut down the whole circus because us good guys aren't willing to even say the bad guys are bad. We can't even give women that small uh, a concession. Again, women have periods and they have the pain of childbirth. And you assholes are saying that I can't even have any sympathy for their vulnerability in the dating environment. I mean, you really can't give anything, can you? You're just a taker. Um, so this is what, so it's just so funny. Talk about a straw man, and look what this idiot puts in my mouth. Guilty until proven innocent. Where have I ever said that women should be able to get men convicted of rape without evidence? Where did I say that? Where did I even imply that? You can't even find me implying that. I've actually overtly said that the crime of perjury should be one of the greatest crimes we prosecute. Somebody who lies, testifies, and lies about somebody else uh, deliberately, willfully, maliciously, it should be one of the worst crimes you can commit as a human being, is to lie about somebody else's character or their behavior. So where have I said anything about women should be allowed to throw men in jail willy-nilly with any kind of story? I didn't say that. What I said was women are vulnerable and men with balls should respect that vulnerability and do everything to make it possible for women uh, not to feel so vulnerable. And <clears throat> I'm not suggesting that instead we go around telling people it's your responsibility to not get raped, and if you do, it's all your fault. Well, again, I'm just saying that Thunderfoot basically puts the entire responsibility in the woman's court and basically says, well, if you don't want the risk, stay in your house. <laughs> yeah, if you're not willing to accept the risk, you know. Uh, you're full of shit. Rape can easily be disproven these days through science. Rape can be easily disproven these days through science. That's for DNA testing to decide. So he thinks a DNA test proves how the sperm got into the woman's uh, cervix or anus or ear. And it got there. <laughs> the, the DNA test could tell that the woman consented. They can tell rape sperm from regular sperm, scientifically. Yeah, this guy went to college. So stop with your B. Yes, it's real bullshit to say, no, that's really not possible, crazy person. And if they don't want to make it official, well, I guess they just get no justice then. If they don't want to make it official... Well, I guess they just get no justice then. The point is they can't get justice because to have evidence would require them to basically violate the man's right to privacy. I mean, she'd basically have to covertly uh, uh, have her life videotaped so there'd always be somebody with the cell phone uh, to watch what happened. And I'm saying, I've argued that, you know, frankly, I think this would be a really good idea, actually, is to have cameras everywhere so nobody can ever be a perpetrator and get away with it. Um, yeah, so what? What's the big... Uh, nobody, what, what are we... You know, 
<laughs> there really shouldn't be, you know, I'm, I just mean that not everything would be public. I'm just saying that everything would be recorded. And whether something has to become public would be an issue for courts to decide. But I'm just saying the evidence should always be collected. And then when it's used, it would only need to be used when somebody made an accusation. And look at the fly-by-night haters who have no clue. Oh, okay, that's, you know, Thunderfoot uh, Dick Riders, as they put it. But anyway. Um, <clears throat> so, I don't know. Okay, well, yeah, so, so now there's Mike. And he says something. Yeah, I mean, this is, you know, I, I mean, I don't know. One argument's positive, one argument negative. So let's see what this one is. If you believe that suffering sucks, why wish harm upon another individual? Why? Because they're committing an act that I believe is harmful. That they're going to get some little girl raped by his conduct. His conduct is influencing uh, impressionable retards, like Zad, <laughs> okay, um, into a false notion of entitlement and that is obnoxious and disgusting that he was basically going to facilitate the psychological syndromes um, delusional syndrome um, that will create rape uh, let's see if Thunderfoot has a different position for which you disagree with then leave it at that well again I don't know how I haven't left it at that I'm making my counter argument I'm pointing out how Thunderfoot's argument is narrow-minded and ignorant and what else have I done what, what is my crime here beyond that oh that's right I haven't committed one fuck you I didn't shove a telephone pole up his ass I didn't even submit a proposal to Congress that that's what be done. I just said something like, fuck, he deserves it. I mean, I can't really manifest empathy and, and a sensitivity um, to the suffering of individuals who are, in my opinion, perpetrating violations and impositions of that very thing. I mean, you know, I have the same, you know, well, whatever. I mean, you know, I, I obviously don't think much of women who have babies. You know, I'd like to kick some pregos in the fucking goddamn vagina. Does that mean that I would really want to kick them in the vagina? I'm just saying, it's a figure of speech, shithead. Use a little proportion, would you please? Um, <clears throat> what is duplicitous about your stance on do no harm is wherein the clip shows you explicitly stating harm against Thunderfoot. Well, again, I'm saying if you don't make harm, then there's no reason to harm you. So my whole point is about this deserve argument. Don't commit anything that makes you deserve punishment, and then you won't get punishment. So my argument still holds in the sense that there's no problem unless you create a problem. And problems are kind of, you can't fix them. You're not really getting that part, right? You just can't undo some shit. It can never be undone. You can't bring the dead back to life. You can't, you can't give back people the things that they're robbed of or they're taken away from them. I mean, if your dog bites somebody's face off, you, you just can't glue it back on. Fuckhead. Um, <clears throat> stating harm against Thunderfoot for defending... Well, it is a... Disgusting and abhorrent act being an advocate for do no harm while wishing harm is hypocritical. Well, anyway, well, look, you're, you're pointing out that I'm a hypocrite because somehow I'm saying that, you know, I'm first off, I'm not a hypocrite in the sense that I'm saying it's, you know, punishment is a viable mechanism of prevention. But clearly, I'm not making that argument as a philosophical argument. I'm saying. That's a personal sense I have of no empathy for perpetrators. It's not a philosophical position, all right? And I expressed it that way. It was clearly an emotional statement, not a philosophical statement. And I've been clear on my philosophical stance. And it's only because Thunderfoot is so outrageously stupid and malignant and malicious that, I, that it's necessary for me to say something that excessive. And I'll concede it's an excessive statement. It's not very articulate. Not very nuanced. 
and not very uh, complete. Your stance is basically it's wrong to take advantage of someone against their will regardless of the situation. I would agree to that. Well, I don't think regardless of the situation, but whatever. Thought you cannot espouse a statement wishing somebody harm while trying to defend do no harm. Well, again, you and you can't prevent harm doers from being harm doers if you don't um, hold a hammer over their nuts. If you do nothing to extort them into being decent, they won't be decent by volition because they don't have the internal mechanism that makes that possible. So there are people you have to extort into this decency, and you're not going to extort them by wishy-washy bullshit saying something like, well, you have no free will, and you can't control what you do, so go ahead and do what you feel like doing, because that's what you inevitably would do, even though, no, what you'll inevitably do is based on what you calculate to be your cost-to-benefit analysis, and... Yes, your cost-to-benefit analysis will change if you think there's some guy who's got a hammer and he's going to crush your nuts uh, if you rape that woman. Yeah, something like that. Anyway. So, I, I mean, look, it's okay. You know, call me on my excessive rhetoric. I'll concede, it, you know, I shouldn't be stating that I think it'd be a good idea to shove telephone poles up people's asses. But I'm just saying that the idea of, of you know, finding things evil, nasty, just really, really bad, and wanting to crush them in some substantial manner um, is, is understandable. That's all. It's a human reaction. And again, I think being fair, again, I, you know, what you pull out of my videos is one thing. But again, pulling clips out of rooms, I think, is kind of just bullshit. Mostly. Anyway, uh, you know, I mean, rooms that are four in the morning rooms, uh, you know. Uh, maybe you are a woman, Gary, and that's why you are so offended. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, maybe I am. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm anything my imagination can enable me to understand the position of. And so, yes, I'm able to imagine being a woman. Uh, Anna Sarkeesian is a well-known parasite, whatever that means, a man-hater, well, apparently for some good reason. And <clears throat> defending her just makes you look like a self-hating faggot. Uh, great. <laughs> cool. Um, pot calling kettle black much when you have to resort to juvenile name calling. I mean, can you just, I mean, the hypocrisy is only three and a half inches away. I mean, three and a half, you know, like your penis erect, right? Three and a half inches. You, you can't, you know, shit. Fuckhead, you can't do that. You can't use the word faggot and then talk about juvenile name calling. It's just so stupid. And talking about someone's looks to make yourself look better. Well, like, again, the argument isn't who, who brought the weapons to the game is all I'm saying. If Thunderfoot made disciplined, sensible, cautious, careful, um, polite videos defending the fact that somehow men are being totally abused by this idea that women have it worse than men, or something like that, um, then there, then this argument would be valid. But it, that's not the circumstance. Just not. Thunderfoot's the he's, he's the asshole who brought the, the the bag of tricks to the game, and so the fact that once the bag gets open, everybody starts pulling shit out. Well, that's his, it's his bad, asshole. So in a nutshell, you claim that women are just stupid to rely... <sighs> Again, so he's calling somebody stupid and he can't write a sentence. Okay, exclaim that women are just too, too, it should be too, oh, oh, there, I guess. Stupid to rely on their own, own their own common sense factors. Common sense factors? What is it, Star Trek or something? <laughs> What's a common sense factor? Common sense factor. 
Yeah. What? What? Again, how? How is this even? How is? I can't even connect this to anything. How is the fact that women are often raped without any real capacity to impose justice? How does that fact have anything to do with this mush? So therefore, must be treated like irrational children. So you see your argument fails on its face. Well, I, I can't. That comment doesn't even have a face to fall on. Uh, so anyway. All right, so that's enough. But anyway, I really hate these obnoxious people. I mean, what, what, what is it with you, Zad? You really think this is... This is uh, not rude to doing this in the comment section. You can't just make one articulate comment. You have to do this. Crap. I'm Zed. I'm Zed. Here, I'm Zed again. I'm Zedding. I'm Zedding. Like your ass, your perception of yourself is inflated. Okay, now enough. Sorry, this was a useless video. I thought it'd be funnier, but that just wasn't funny. <laughs> yeah. Whoops, my bad. Um, but, you know, I. It's good I read, but, you know, it's, it's look. I'm saying good. Call me on. I'm, I'm not really allowed to keep doing certain things. I keep doing. I mean, I do. I do say the word faggot now and then. I do some things that I really shouldn't do. And this whole idea of visualizing telephone poles going up assholes' asses, I probably shouldn't do that. You know, you know, I I don't have an excuse to do it unless it really gets personal. I mean, somebody rapes my sister. I guess I probably have a right to imagine that person with a telephone pole up their ass. Probably. See, it's it's just difficult. I mean, you know, I'm all for us being trying to be as philosophically precise and careful as possible, but we're all humans, and so yeah, we we. Our humanity corrupts logic. But clearly what Thunderfoot does, quote mining, engineering, manipulation, and his videos are just full of deliberate manipulation. I'm not trying to manipulate anybody when I say something excessive, out of anger. He's attempting to manipulate an argument, manipulates people's psychology through these these psychological tools, all right. He's he's <clears throat> he's not much better than a Scientologist. He's playing head games with his audience. And I think that's a lot different than what I'm doing. So I accept your accusation. I accept that I probably should do better. But I'm also going to just claim in my own defense. <sighs> yeah, it's hard. It's hard being a social justice warrior. It's hard looking at this disgusting, putrid, stupid, fucking ignorant world. And you see all these dumbass people who don't know anything and have no fucking hope of getting a clue. And then when you see people who are educated say things that are just so fucking stupid... It's just so, it's so foul. I mean, I just don't, you know, it's like double puke. It just, ugh, God, that is so gross. It just, you know, it just sucks all the, <laughs> you know, you just can't, you, you just, you, you just, yeah, you, you, the monkey just is too disgusted to, to let go of the brain long enough for the brain to say, just do your job. Be a good little soldier. I'm pissed off. Yeah. It happens. Anyway. <clears throat> I mean, that sounds like a rationalization. And so I'm not really. I'm really not defending myself. I, as I've said, look, I am an. I, there should be. Unfortunately, 
Yeah, I probably shouldn't have to do these videos. Somebody better than me should do them. But until somebody better than me shows up to do them, I'm going to do them. But I'm all for somebody better than me doing them. <laughs> yeah. So anyway. Yeah, enough said. Until next time. Well, more than enough, actually.